Hey guys, today we're gonna to be running you through the Dometic three-way 220 liter fridge. This is also the same as the 180 liter three-way fridge, it's the same operation, obviously larger capacity. First notable point on this, just for warranty purposes, your identification of your fridge is located here. Model is RUA8408X, and you have a SKU number and also a product production number, which is indicating all of your details in relation to your current fridge. So in the event of a warranty circumstance, that will be your identifying piece of placard that they'll ask you for as proof of purchase, as well as proof of ownership of this particular product so they can better diagnose the issue. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. So first and foremost, we're gonna be running you through how to actually turn the fridge on, how to use it, how to troubleshoot it, how to be able to diagnose any issues, when you should be lodging a warranty claim, and the different settings within the fridge, and of course, the infamous how to remove child lock after you have avoided all of the previous suggestions of don't touching the fridge's settings, but you've still done it anyway. So we'll jump right in. We're gonna hold this down. This is going to turn the fridge on. Two little arrows appear to symbolize that of Dometic. And then we have our standard setting. So we have the dial knob. Now in first interaction, the dial knob will not do anything. It will not move this screen. It will only activate when you press the wake function, which is press. And you'll notice in the video, it has dimmed off the center and the bottom icons. And now illuminated is the top temperature icon. By rotating right, as in down, you can go between the settings. So currently we're on auto, and then you also have settings down here, down the bottom. So we rotate again, we'll go back to the top. So first and foremost, let's deal with the top setting, temperature. So we're going to press again, and then we can scroll temperature up or down, depending on how hot or cold the climate is outside. Obviously the colder it is, the warmer outside, and the cooler it is, the cooler inside is required. Keeping in mind, obviously the temperature capacity relies on that of energy use. So if you have it very high, you'll be using far more energy or far more gas. Uh, if you have it low, far less energy, far less gas. So once we're happy with our selection, which today it's 38 degrees, so we're going to pop him back on. After the selection is made, the dial now does nothing. It's important to note that after you've made one selection, you then need to re-engage the fridge to make another selection. It's very important to note, a lot of people get frustrated and start clicky, clicking, clicking away. Uh, it's not like a mouse, just go easy. One selection, slow it right down, make your selection on the dial, and then go from there. Now, of course, in our setting here, we're at a caravan park. So, as you'll note, with the twist of this, the icons illuminate again, not pressing, of course. You'll see we're on auto and we're on 240 volt power. So 240 volt power obviously symbolizes that we're plugged in at a caravan park. Everything's engaged as far as power goes. And then the next sort of intelligent setting that it will auto switch to is that of gas. It's important to note, if you're gonna use gas, please make sure your gas bottle's at the front. You have selected the regulator to the correct bottle. That is open, open up the bottle and engage. If you wanna be able to test that you in fact have gas running through the system, because you keep getting errors on this front, go over to your cooktop, give it a test, make sure there's gas coming through. Evidently, if there's no gas, you're gonna have an error here. Or maybe you didn't get out of your car quick enough and turn your gas on or off at the front of the van, which we'll get to in the next little part. So, let's go to the next setting. So, we press the center. We scroll down to the middle. We press it again. We have auto illuminated, we have power illuminated, we have nothing illuminated on the battery, and we have nothing illuminated on the gas. We can manually override these settings by making a selection like this. We can manually override this setting by manually making a manual selection like that. The bottom button, of course, as you rotate down, it's gonna go in sequential order, is back. So we've nominated battery. Again, back, and we'll go to gas. Great. You can hear the gas starting to fire up, providing this gas running through the system. Go back to the sitter, go back to that, I'm gonna leave it on auto. Now it's really important, I would suggest, unless you're at a caravan park for a bit of time and the power keeps going out, some of the far north Queensland side for stuff, depending on heat, sometimes the power trips out, sometimes there's just issues overall. If you're going to manually select a setting, I would just leave it on auto, but let's say the power keeps going out, you can't trust that the fridge is not gonna get warm and cold and warm and cold and then food poisoning, salmonella, not great. So you wanna keep it on gas setting for instance, for the whole night period until the electrical issue is resolved, you would click it, you would roll down to the middle, press it, go to gas, click, and then go back, and then now it's on gas. So the three settings of a tropically rated three-way fridge is 240 volt power or power plugs with the three little prongs. You've got gas with the flame, and you also have battery icon as well, which is symbolizing a 12 volt connection. So 240 volt connection symbolizes that of a plug-in power like a caravan park or you're plugged at home. It's important to note as well, it takes 24 hours for the fridge to actually get truly cold and a thermostat um, from that of Spotlight or a home store or some of the real digital sort of iPhone compatible ones are fantastic. 
Um, I definitely would look at those to be able to keep it in just for um, food uh, protection, obviously just with temperatures. Um, you have gas, which is evidently a free camp setting, um, which you would activate when you're parked on the side of the road on a quick uh, pit stop, 25, 30 minutes, get some lunch. You want the gas to start up and start heating the chemicals in the back of the fridge to keep it cold. Or you have 12 volt. Obviously the 12 volt in a three-way fridge is not designed to keep the fridge uh, getting cold. It's designed to keep the cold air inside of the fridge circulating with fans and keeping everything nice and crisp. A lot of people try and run the 12 volt when they're free camping, that's not gonna work. It's only when you're driving, the alternator's turning in the car, you need to make sure that the 12 volt setting is only illuminated, and it really will only be illuminated when you're driving. So the two make me cold settings is 240 volt when you're at a caravan park, or free camping, which is your gas option. So for our testing purposes, we actually have our uh, test box, on this caravan, so our 12 volt setting will in fact work. Uh, the 12 volt setting, when you turn your car on, your car, if wired correctly, as per the wiring diagram, which will be in the description below, will have um, a positive and negative feed from pins eight and 10, which is supplying power, and then you have a 12 volt ignition to pin number 12, which tells this fridge via a sensor, uh, and a, a 12 volt signal, I suppose, um, will tell this fridge that now it's time to automatically, with its auto setting, switch to 12 volt. Without that ignition wire present, it will never make the switch because it assumes it's not hooked up to a vehicle. If it's not working for you, hand on heart, scouts on it, your car's probably not wired correctly. Nine times or 9.8 times out of 10, it is always the customer's vehicle. There is one wire that runs from this directly to the front of the A-frame. It is one continuous line. There is no splits, joins, modifications. There's no staples, glues, screws in the walls. So there is no chance it's been nicked, impinged, cut, nothing like that. Chances are it probably hasn't been wired up. A fuse is blown in the vehicle. So definitely engage your auto electrician or run through our multimeter video, which we're going to be bringing out shortly to test whether you actually have 12 volt power. So we're going to run a little test just to be able to show you some of the cool little features. So we go back to the auto setting, back to the power. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna jump underneath this fridge where the power point is located. Oh, no, I am wrong. The power point is located behind our drawers here. And I'm going to physically turn it off to imitate that of being disconnected from 240 volt power. The fridge will sense that there is something wrong and it will make an automatic selection of what its next preferential um, uh, setting will be. Uh, and it will make that switch as soon as it loses um, understanding that it's lost 12 volt, uh, sorry, lost 240 volt power. Bang, straight on the battery. So funnily enough, it's gone to the battery. So its next setting is battery. So it has gas available and battery available. It has automatically gone to the battery icon because the next setting um, would assume that if you're driving the vehicle because you're connected, it's sensing its connection, you don't want it to start trying to tick and light the gas up. So um, what I'll do, I'll jump outside, I'll join you back in here in just a second, I'll turn off our test box and we'll show you what the next jump in the setting will be. Okay, so we've disconnected our vehicle, we've come into the caravan and we've had a look. So bang, look at that, a completely different icon. Take a guess, that is a petrol Bowser icon. So. Mum and dad driving down the road, things are great. Auto electrician nailed the wiring. Let's assume kids are hungry because they're carrying on. They want a cheeseburger. So we're pulling inside Maccas. They've got a wicked playground. So kids are going to be playing there for a bit. So we're there for at least 20 minutes. Cool. Scene is set. Car turns off. Great. Kids are running. They're going nuts. Love it. Awesome. So excited. The fridge doesn't know that you're at a Maccas or you're at a petrol station. Let's assume you're at a petrol station. If the fridge automatically starts going, ah, oh, lost 12 volt power, let's crack into the, uh, let's have a go at the gas, get the gas firing up. You're filling up petrol. <laughs> Not very safe. Bing, bang, 7-Eleven's blown up side of the road. Not a great headline uh, for Dometic or any of the fridge supplies. So you have on this icon, 15 minutes. 15 precious minutes where you can get out of the car Stretch your legs, do the uh, yawn, stretch, whatever you want, turn your gas on. If you don't turn your gas on, you are gonna have an error. It's gonna error 51, it's probably gonna error 50, it's probably gonna error some absurd other error with a little triangle, warning, exclamation mark, oh, this is bad, red icon. And you're gonna think, fridge is broken. It's not the case. What it means is, unfortunately, you have got out of the car, you've not turned your gas on, 
which means the fridge within 15 minutes after passing time has tried to turn the gas on three times. It makes three attempts. And then it's gone, nah, got no gas. I call this toddler tantrum mode. So toddler tantrum mode is not gonna even attempt it. It's gonna say, I don't have gas. I'm not happy. I'm not doing anything until you come in. Give me a cuddle, reset me via my reset button over here. And then maybe I'll attempt to light up the gas again. Some of these errors exist for other reasons. There's a lot of software in these fridges. Sometimes they require a reset. If the reset that we're gonna demonstrate doesn't clear the error or the error persists, or you have a look at the user manual located in the bro uh, bottom worth of the description here, it's something like a condenser or a cooling unit failure or something like that. That is the point in time in which you would engage your dealer. You would have a discussion with them in relation to the warranty of the fridge with a photo of your placard um, in order to be able to engage a rectification method with a local repairer. But an error 50, a 51, a 13, or whatever the other few things are, you clear them, you move on, you make sure the gas is on. It's easy as that. Sometimes power goes out and it loses a little bit of power, it'll error 12, bang, reset. Right as rain, back on the, back on the, uh, back on the gravy train. So this guy here, as I said, 15 minutes, he's gonna be illuminated. Um, while he's waiting to change, we're going to run you through some of the user settings. So that's the last part of this little illumination. We go click. We go down to our big icons down here. Bang, oh, bang. User mode. Now, we've set this up perfectly before you picked your caravan up, so you won't have to touch anything. But let's say you like to fiddle. User mode, bang. Performance, battery saver, silent. Performance, that's what we want. No one wants something that doesn't perform top notch. So, assumingly, you wanna leave it on performance. Battery save. This is a very silly setting. This setting here will disable all functionality of 240 and 12 volt power. It will only use gas. I don't particularly know why it only uses gas, but if you're having issues not getting gas, it is probably because you have fiddled with the user settings and gone to battery save. Silence, this is assuming you don't wanna hear any errors. I reckon we just leave it on performance. Uh, sorry, actually, silence, excuse my ignorance here, silence is in the process of if you don't wanna hear the condenser running in the fridge, you want it to be silent. You don't want that, you wanna know everything's working, you leave it on performance, great. So we're gonna go back. Now we're back to the home screen button, it doesn't work. Remember, we have to press it. Then we go down to the bottom. Then we have settings. All right, this is where the infamous phone calls in relation to child lock settings come into play. So let me run you through each icon. You want two fans running in this fridge. It comes with two fans that are automatically activated. You want them on. Let's keep rotating here, just to keep it up. That is a child lock. If you turn that on, please don't ring me. It is the number one most annoying thing to try and troubleshoot over the phone with or without FaceTime. Do not turn it on ever absolutely painful leave it off if it's not illuminated it is off don't touch it this here is a heating element that runs all the way around the freezer and the heating element um, will keep the frost off the inside of the door silence you want to hear the errors if there is d plus this enables the fridge to use the auto selection setting if you turn this off you will lose the auto feature don't turn it off so in summary of all these settings all of these are set up exactly how you want them. If you fiddle with them, you're going to have a bad time. If you leave them as is, as per my instructions, you can have a fantastic camping experience. Let's go back. We're still on the auto change setting. So we're going to come back after the error has appeared, the gas is off, and we'll show you the clearing method. So we're back with the infamous error 50, the number one thing that plagues the Facebook community groups. Sometimes it's 50, sometimes it's 51. So how do you clear it? Well. You need to understand why it's happened. It's happened because of various reasons. Either, and normally, it's because you've gotten out of your car, you've waited more than 15 minutes for it to start trying to ignite on gas, you haven't enabled the gas to come through to the gas on the fridge, so you haven't turned the gas bottle on, uh, maybe one or two many things going on, you haven't done it, the fridge has attempted to light and gone, ooh, I haven't got gas, error 50. It will not attempt to light again unless you physically reset it. So how do we do that? Great question. We do that by a very simple touch technique. So we hold down, let it go on the beep, straight away, bang, it's gonna error again. Bang, it's gonna error again. It will error again. And the reason why it's gonna error again is because I still haven't turned the gas on, right? I've cut the uh, gas line cock underneath the uh, fridge and it will not work. The reason why I've done that is to demonstrate that why will the error reoccur? It's gonna reoccur because it hasn't solved the problem. You probably haven't turned the gas on the front. You thought the wife's done it. You thought the husband's done it. You thought the kids have done it. You told them to do it. They didn't do it. So you need to make sure the gas is on the front. You're gonna double check that. Go over to the stove, turn the stove on, make sure gas is flowing through the stove. If the gas doesn't flow through the stove, why isn't the gas flowing through the stove? Chances are the gas bottles are off. 
So I'm going to go underneath the fridge where we have our gas cock located. I'm gonna turn the gas on to enable gas to flow to the fridge. And then the fridge will, when the attempt to alight, it will actually clear the error indefinitely. Sometimes the error is with the 240 power as well. So if I manually override the power, it will bang, error 05. I don't have 240 volt power. And I can clear it as many times as I like, right? Uh, the trick is on this is on the beep, you gotta let it go. Bang, error again. Yeah, clear it again. No, I've done it, I've fixed it. Error again. So there's a broader issue happening here. Either the power point located in your pantry or to the side of the fridge, it's only a limited uh, lead, so check your overheads, your under cupboards, your side, your underneath of the fridge. Um, you haven't rectified it. So what we need to do is we need to turn it back on. So in order to turn it back on, we have a power point. Power point is back on. And now if I reset this, it should be pretty sweet. So I'll turn this back to auto and it automatically will go to power because that's its first preferential treatment. It goes power, gas, 12 volt, unless you're hooked up to a car, and then it goes power, 12 volt, gas, because it doesn't want to try and light you up while you're on the road. The fridge has some physical elements to it as well, not just the software elements of it. So underneath here on our freezer door, you have a little clip that goes up and it keeps the freezer door open to uh, go in storage um, it also has one for the fridge, bang, like so, and keeps everything nice and open. The fridge, of course, has a walkthrough. Um, we have um, our wire shelving, so very premium quality fixtures and fittings. We have our plastic shelving. Now, best advice is light items in here. We've had customers come in with full jars of Vegemite. Two issues with that. One, why are you keeping Vegemite in the fridge? It's a pantry food. Second issue, it's heavy it will bounce in this unit as you're going on dirt roads. You need to think longevity. Just because the warranty has 12 months doesn't mean that after three years, something goes wrong. You wanna make sure you look after your product. You spend a lot of money on this. So keep the heavy items either down low, um, tucked up here in a little storage container. Um, our drinks are in here, of course. Try and keep, again, heavy items out of there. Try and move things to a plastic container. We have a crisper drawer. What are you gonna use it for? Well, you got a choice. You have veggies, you have fruit, and then you can pop your bits and pieces here. Maybe do it halfway, it's really up to you. Um, these little caps here are the fixing points to hold the fridge in, and then obviously all our wiring's at the back of the unit. All of the fan systems up here. When to contact Crusader Caravans and your dealer for warranty? Well, that would be when something's out of your control. Something that is happening with the fridge is something that you don't know how to fix. For instance, in Era 3, it's a condenser failure unit. The, van smell, the, the fridge smells like ammonia. That's probably a, a phone call to your dealer. But best thing you can do is take a photo of the fridge totally so they can see the actual unit. You can then open up the door and go, hey, I have a little placard here and the placard is this model fridge. So when they contact a medic service agent for you, they can provide them with all the model information and everything they need to be made aware of to rectify your caravan and your fridge. For more information or queries, you can contact us uh, via michael at crusadermelbourne.com. Give us a call um, or alternatively, jump onto the next video and enjoy some fault finding experience. Have a great day.